All right, welcome to a uh, special little kind of mini episode of Gears of Resistance. Actually, it's not too mini, which is why it's going to be a separate episode. Um, I had promised earlier uh, in the week that we were going to do a video where we took the Eagle CAD file, the board file that we did to do the PCB milling with the other mill. We were going to take that same board file and actually create a um, an enclosure with it uh, using Fusion 360. So uh, when I was all said and done doing that video, it was 53 minutes by itself. So I decided instead of making that a part of a, a normal episode of Gears of Resistance, we're just going to release it as is. Uh, with that, because it is so long, I'm going to go ahead and shut up and uh, turn it over to uh, the previous me, or old me. Alright, let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to... to um, like I mentioned, we're going to show another part of the workflow we do here. So we'll go from the Eagle CAD file, the board file. Um, we showed in the last video how you can make uh, a circuit board. It's not a printed circuit board. It's a milled, milled circuit board, an MCB, I guess, um, using other mill and their software, other plan, which uh, just got updated to, I think it's like 1.1.7 now. So I haven't seen any major differences yet, but just know that since last time um, we did upgrade uh, the software on other plan, but for the most part it looks the same. And uh, Eagle's now up to 8.2.0. Um, they're in the midst of making, it looks like some pretty big changes. Uh, right now it looks like there's focus on uh, how they handle the libraries for all your parts. It looks like they're trying to make it um, a little bit more user friendly to keep it up to date all your libraries or at least the the default libraries up to date so uh just be aware you know everything uh right now is kind of in a state of change but um i would hope at least you know most of this 80 percent of this would stay consistent with time all right so again um just going back so we started an eagle we drew up our schematic we got a board file we were able to basically import that board file right into other plan. You just hit open file, you go to your board file, and right away you make some adjustment to what your end mill bits were. And now you can go ahead and like I said in that last video, we'll link to that video down below, um, we cut out a circuit board. I think last time we did a different board, but the same principles and the same processes apply. Um, we're going to actually do it with this one because I've actually built this one, uh, this board. So we're actually going to build a case for it today. Um, so basically we have a photon, we have um, some headers, and we have a, uh, a sensor that, um, again, converts the, uh, the amount of light, the intensity of light, into a frequency, of basically a DC pulse strain. So we're going to build an enclosure for that, and we're going to start using the same board file that uh, we made the circuit board out of. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down other plan and other mill, uh, eagle. So again, starting with this board file, we're going to actually now go ahead and we minimize this. There's two new buttons. Uh, they've been around for at least the 8.0 iterations of, of eagle. You'll see this says make an MCAD. We're going to start with this MCAD button. Um, and it's going to launch uh, ecad.io. And you hit XE, yep, I agree. I hit OK. So it's going to launch a website. Boom, 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 boom. That takes your board file and automatically generates a 3D, uh, 3D file of the board file. Yay! Now you're going to notice that, actually let me go ahead and expand this. So it doesn't have the components. So it knows there's components here, it just doesn't know what to do with them. So there is a way to actually, uh, and it's a growing library. Again, a lot of this is in a state of flux. Things are, are hopefully they'll stick with it. But if you click on the component, it turns yellow. And if you go over here to choose component package, you drop that down. Um, 
it will use things that it thinks is close, but in this case, neither one is close. So we'll hit more components. It's a through hole. And it's going to be, since this is the photon itself, uh, we're going to hit integrated circuits. And if you notice right there, particle photon. Photon with header. So, yep, let's use this component. And voila, it puts a 3D rendered image of your um, of the photon onto your board. So now you kind of get in for the purposes of building a 3D printed enclosure, we're going to want to know basically we the, the board is going to define the x and the y, but the z height is going to determine on the components. So that's one done. Over here, this is a going to be um, an eight pin dip chip dip chip chip dip um, we don't really have to get exactly the same component it can be close at least as long as a dip um, I think in our case though again the defining feature is going to be the photon but for interest of uh, completeness so there we go um, I just want to point out if it puts a package in sometimes it'll put the package in and it won't be actually lined up to your pin uh, your through holes um, if you collect, if you select the component and do package offset, you can do things like um, move it in the X and Y to kind of get lined up. So X, Y, Z height, and also the rotation. So you can rotate it around. If, for instance, it put like pin one on the other side, you could rotate it to get that. Um, so just another the package offset, so select the package, go to package offset, and you can move your stuff around to get it placed on the board appropriately. But we're not going to change anything. And let's go over here and let's add this last thing is a, um, uh, a male header. It's three of them. Eh, let's, well, let's use it there. Is that it? Yeah, let's use that. All right, perfect. So it didn't quite line up, right? So we're going to go ahead and select it, go to package offset, and I think that's going to be the x-axis, yeah. So we'll move that over. Uh, hit apply. Always forget hit apply. If you don't forget to hit apply, it will, it'll take it back. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Again, our interest on here is more of the x height. This is our, excuse me, the z height for the purpose of printing the enclosure. Yeah, and the photon looks like it's still still the the uh, overriding factor here so um ba -boom, boom, boom. all right so that's a 3d board uh you can save that if you go over to file you can uh, take a screenshot download the screenshot if you want to put that up on your website oops um ba -boom, boom, boom. but if you go over to uh, file so again file create mcad file so we're going from the electronic or electrical cad side now we're going to go to the mechanical side um, you have a lot of choices um, uh, probably if you were to actually say you want to go straight to just 3d print this for some reason so you wanted to create a mock-up just to see you know test the uh, form fit function kind of stuff um, you could go to an STL and then drop that into uh, a 3d printer but in our case we're going to um, want to use uh, the step files, at least this is the ones I've been using because um, we're going to basically dump this into uh, Fusion 360 to create a uh, enclosure for it so I'm going to go ahead and select and make this a part file um, you can make the traces and the uh, copper as a, as a part of the solid or you can make it as an image again uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with just export the traces as an image because I really don't care about its look uh, at that level of detail. I just need to get a kind of the X, Y, and Z to build an enclosure. So we'll go ahead and hit create. Um, it'll take a couple seconds it'll, or a couple minutes to do. But if you go over here to mycad.io, myecad.io, um, you'll notice it's chugging away. And then uh, you can also over here, there's some other actions you can, um, you know, so any of your, basically this keeps a list of all your projects. If you want to delete them or view them again, uh, this is where you'll find all your previous projects. 
So again, it takes a couple seconds, maybe a couple minutes. It will process that file. Um, and then when you're, uh, you can, and you can actually export it into multiple things. So if you want to go back later and export it as an STL or an OBJ file, you can do that. And then it'll just add, um, actually, let me go down here and I think I've got one. Yeah, so like here, right? I created this old one as an STL file, as a step file. Um, just to test it out. It'll send you an email if it takes, like if you got a really something really big, um, you know, we're doing like basically two inch by three inch boards. So there it is, it's completed and the, it'll send you an email notification if you want to walk away and come back later. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and um, uh, if you go over next to each, each one you create, each mechanical file you create, you'll have an action button. And you can do things like download the file directly, download it as a zip, send it to Google Drive, OneDrive, uh, or in our case, we're going to send it to Autodesk Fusion 360. And I will go ahead at this point, and I'm going to quit Eagle. And I'm going to launch Fusion. I think it will launch it for you automatically. Let's actually try it. Let's go ahead. I think it will automatically launch Fusion. And then drop it in there. Yep, so there it goes. Fusion is opening up. Go ahead and minimize Chrome. Here comes Fusion. And then there's a little couple little cleanup things that we have to do to the board. Um, it might just be me not knowing what I'm doing completely. Um, but uh, to make it kind of easier to work with there's a little couple little cleanup things we like to do with the I like to do with the board file I'm also going to send some links to uh, some other channels I've been watching to learn fusion 360 um, there's also if you have access to lynda.com there's also a, a couple good ones there um, so for, and about that so uh, check check your local library actually uh, we here. I found out that our local library system um, lets, if you're, you know, card carrying member, which is usually free because it's paid out of your taxes, um, you can get a uh, Linda account uh, for free. So that's how I got my access here. All right. So let's go ahead. Um, all right. So let's first go ahead and combine. Because frankly, um, for our purposes, we're not going to do any sort of mechanical changes to the board. If we're going to do any changes to the board, we're going to go back and do it uh, in Eagle and then work our work workflow forward. So we're going to tell it to join all this stuff together and make a new component out of it. So it's just basically one one component, hopefully. Yep, there we go. And I'm going to go over here and rename it PCB so that we can now toggle the circuit board on and off. All right. That is weird. Why is it? that to be a part of here. I want everything to be a part of here. All right. All right, so that's the active component. What we're going to go ahead and do right now, um, so this is the top view looking down. I want to rotate this so that it's kind of laying flat. And so what I will go ahead and do now is uh, hit let's see, M for select it all, M for move, I want to rotate, I want to select the, uh, basically this is the axis of rotation, and let's do... 90 degrees is going to make it upside down. Let's try 180 degrees, I think. Nope. 
Let's try 90. 180. Let's try 270. Maybe I'm thinking wrong. There we go. Beautiful. So I hit OK. Now when I look top down, I'm looking at the top of the board. So again, it doesn't really matter, but I think for purposes of keeping our head straight, um, uh, it helps. So next thing, um, when I 3D print, I usually make the walls of my enclosure two millimeters thick. And then I give myself about a half a millimeter uh, clearance so that the board, you know, when it, when you 3D print, it's not always going to be exactly that two millimeters. So basically what I want to do is give myself, um, basically build a wall all the way around on either side of about two and a quarter. Um, the wall will be two millimeters, but I give myself a clearance of two and a quarter so that hopefully the board will sit in nice and snug. Um, to do that though, so let's first, actually let's take a look real quick, make sure this is all lined up. All right, so there's the problem, right? So right now it's sitting um, probably what, 20, 30, 40 millimeters above the surface. So let's go ahead and again, select all this stuff. Move. This time I'm going to go to a point to position move. So I'm going to point this bottom, select this bottom left point of the board. And I want it to sit at the origin. So I'll put 0, 0, 0. And then hit OK. And again, I apologize for just how pitifully slow this computer is. Um, all right. Now obviously we're going to have to take into account the fact that the leads of our board are going to kind of stick at the bottom a little bit uh, in the real world too. So when we really soldered this up. So, you know, and then again, depending on the real components you use, it might be a little different, but we got to take that into account. Um, so when I build the enclosures, I always give myself a probably three, four millimeters of clearance above. If you've got to make something really tight fitting, uh, you know, you'll do some exact measurements, but um, kind of the stuff I do is kind of, you know, just a rough prototype. So I'm not trying to make anything too, too pretty at this point. All right. So now that we're at the, we're at the origin. Um, but like I said, I wanted to give myself about two and a quarter uh, millimeters all the way around um, so that I have a two millimeter wall and a little bit of clearance. So how do I do that? Well, same thing. We're going to go ahead now, and I probably could have done this when I moved it initially. Um, instead of moving it right to the origin, what I could have done was go uh, point to point, and except this time, actually no, I would have done the same thing. I would have picked the same point, I mean. So I go back in, and I say, I'm going to move, oop, select. I'm going to move this point. Now the X, and remember, so it's 2.5, but it's so 2 millimeters is the wall thickness, but the 0.5 is split on the left and the right, or the top and the bottom, so it's going to be 2 and a quarter um, here, so 2.25, and then 2.25. Um, and I'm probably going to go ahead and give myself We'll give ourselves a three millimeter on the Z, so we'll raise it up so that we have enough room underneath the board. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. Did it move? It didn't look like it moved. Did it move? Let's go up here top down. Yeah, it doesn't look like it moved much. Let's try that again. So select everything. Move. I want to move this point to two and a quarter. 
There we go. Two and a quarter. And three. Hit OK. Now, if we take a look. Boom. And then let's rotate top. Zoom out. Ah, I went to go negative on the y-axis but that's cool we can fix that real hurt so I went two and a quarter this way I want to go another two and a quarter so that should be four and four point five millimeters and so to do that same thing that's actually good it's actually a good mistake to show so we'll go ahead and hit move and this time I'm going to do a translate and it's this way and I'm going to do it wants to go this way so it's got to be negative 4.5 there we go alright so now the board is where I want it in three-dimensional space and I can toggle that off let's go top down turn it back on alright so I know and let me get, grab a little piece of paper so I can write this down. Because my memory is crap. All right. So I know I've got two and a quarter millimeters here. Let's see how long this is. Boom, boom. So I for measuring. Uh, 74.021, so for purposes of, again, giving ourselves maybe a little bit of, of wiggle room, we'll make it 74.1 millimeters on the x-axis, and let's see here, the board's width, or length, or whatever, uh, stop it, it's trying to calculate an angle now, um, Forty-eight point three, so we'll bump that to forty-eight point four millimeters on the Y, and two and a quarter. So I got to add four point five to both sides, so or total four point five. So that will make the Y's total uh, fifty-two point nine millimeters. And on the X, that will be 78.6. All right. So what does that mean? Let me go ahead and close that out. So the enclosure, the outer limits of the, the outer mold line of that enclosure will be 78.6 millimeters on the X and then 52.9 millimeters on the Y. And that will give me enough to have a 2 millimeter thickness on the walls and then a, a um, quarter of a mil uh, on either side to help the circuit board fit in nice and snug. All right, so let's go ahead and close this down or, or, or hide the, uh, the board. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to do a sketch now. We're going to sketch this out. Yep, I'm going to start at the origin. I would like to start at the origin. Hello, computer. Rectangle here on the origin. Oh, wait a second. I've got to go back up to the hole. There we go. All right. So now we had to go back out to the enclosure, activate the component. I was down in the circuit board, so I only messed with that. All right. So let's do this again. Boom, at the origin, we'll go ahead and just draw the box, um, boom, 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 and then we'll click the side, D for dimensions, yep, but I want to make that, what did I say, 78.6 millimeters. And 
This side is supposed to be 52.9. All right, so let's zoom to fit. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, stop sketching. So that should be the outer mold line of our bots. And if I hit PCB again, it should fit. Yeah, there we go. Sort of nice and neat. Let's see here. Let's do a measurement here. From here to here, uh, 4.2 millimeters. So if I put in the two millimeters, hmm, I think I may have done some math wrong. No, that's. Yeah, I should shake off. Let's check this side here. Two. Oops. Let's measure from here to here. Oh, I see. It's measuring on the angle. I didn't want that. All right, so I think we're good, actually. All right. So let's go ahead and top down. Yeah, all right. So that should be pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and hide the circuit. Oh, actually, let's take a look. Let's try to figure out what the height should be. So let's go to the front. And so the height of the box, we want to, when we extrude this up, we want it to be, this is, uh, each of these is, I believe, two millimeters. So, um, boom, 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 that's 10, that is 20, we'll currently call it 30 millimeters. That will count for uh, the leads to poke through the bottom of the board and give us a little bit on the height. Um, you know, we'll make it, we'll, we'll give ourselves a little bit extra if we got a, for the lid. So we'll make it 30, we'll do 34. So, I'm going to go back down here, top down, turn off the circuit board. All right, now here's what I've been playing with as of late. Let's go up 34 millimeters. So now we've got a box, right? And this is where I'm sort of still in experimental mode. But I want to go ahead and let's see here. I'm gonna let's go ahead and select it all. Boom. I'm gonna go ahead and first create a new component off of this. Rename it enclosure. Rename it enclosure. Come on, cancel. Rename it enclosure. Enclosure. Uh, let's see here. So the enclosure sketch, I want to drop that down into the enclosure itself. So now the circuit board, you can kind of see it's inside, um, but obviously um, the way it's kind of trading it right now is that enclosure is kind of being treated like a um, solid object. So what I need to do now is tell it, no, I don't want you to be a solid object. I want you to be a... Um, Do, do, do. Not a whole. Where's it? Modify. I want to create a shell. And I want the thickness of that shell to be my two millimeters. And I want it to go towards the inside. I want it to grow out, so I hit OK. And. 
Uh, I'm going to split. We're going to do a, a separate lid. So I'm going to extrude this down negative two. The lid will add on. And if I hopefully did this right, let's rotate this around. I turn back on the circuit board, and the circuit board should be sitting nice and neat right on the inside. In fact, it might be it might be a little too tight. I might want to give myself a little bit more room. Um, in fact, let's go to visual style. Uh, let's do wireframe. Actually, it's looking... Yeah. I think it's pretty good, actually. Give it one last... That looks good. Um, if we wanted to, we could obviously create the holes for, um, uh, you know, the USB port or whatnot. Again, for the purposes of this video, I just want to get the kind of the basics. Um, but uh, do, 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 do. let's go ahead and if I go ahead and escape out, I hit select. We go ahead and make 3D print. I uh, don't want to send it to a, a 3D print utility. I'm just going to make an STL file. Uh, the selection only. Da, 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 da. Refinement looks good. Yeah, Alright, we're going to hit OK. Go ahead and save it for the desktop right now. So I'll do Photon Enclosure. Close enough. Those almost the right word um, let's go ahead and cl close out fusion yes make, make sure we save everything save then quit yep and I just like to just like I um, brought it into uh, the circuit board into other mill or other plan before I um, actually went over to the machine to mill it I'm going to do the same thing with my 3d printer so I'm going to go ahead and I am using Matter Control. I used to use Repetier or Repetier or something something host. But I've moved over to um, Matter Control with the um, a simple printer bot metal, simple, simple metal. So let's go ahead and let's add let's see here can I just drag it onto here yep there we go did it twice twice is nice alright so there's the enclosure actually let me go ahead and blow this out so what I'm going to want to do obviously if we try to print it this way um, not happy days and for the it's because basically it's trying to it'll have all this free space and when it tries to print this side of the box so obviously all we want to need to do is go ahead and rotate the box so we'll go ahead over here to rotate and we're going to say I think that it would be along the y-axis and I want to do a 90 degree rotate nope it was the x-axis there we go and align to bed Actually, let me try something real quick. If I hit, if I had hit rotate, oh, that's good. Okay. So now, so now if I go ahead and hit file print, it'll print out my nice little enclosure, and I will have something to test fit uh, my board in. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna um, for today I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Actually, I got one more thing I want to show. 
and then on the YouTube video, I'll actually go ahead and um, have this printed out. But I want to sit here and waste bandwidth waiting for this. Will probably be like an hour and a half print, if not more. All right, so that's that. That's matter control and 3D printing. Boom, boom. File, exit. The one other thing I wanted to show, I mentioned during the, um, while we're waiting for Fusion to, uh, so let me go back to Eagle. Projects, Eagle, blah, 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 blah. The, uh, the name of the actual the, of the um, the sensor the, is the, it's a TSL 230R. I don't think they sell it in a dip package anymore. At least they don't manu or they don't manufacture it. I'm sure you could find it somewhere. Um, but I had one. I think it was an old Radio Shack part I had gotten at one point. All right. So if you remember earlier, we hit the MCAD button that launched the ECAD.io and, and and everything from there. If you hit the Make button. This launches their circuits.io, um, and the cool thing about it is it gives you basically, um, it, the way I'm using it is kind of like creating like my documentation for my project. So all I have to do is basically say, yep, I agree, I hit upload design, and it launches circuits.io, it uploads that board file, it crunches on it. Um, as you can see here, it says the status is crunching, which is an official, that's a technical term. Uh, I could probably close these other ones down real quick. So it's crunching on that board file and the bill of materials and the schematics. And um, now, if you notice, so there's the board file. Ah. Uh, you can then download the Gerber so you could then take that and upload it to like Osh Park or whoever your um, you know because probably more than likely like you know yes we did the other mill and in fact you can see it actually they've kind of partnered or I guess they're partnering with other mill you can send it and it'll make it um, and this is really great again for because this the circuit side is kind of like a place to share everyone's files. So if you don't have the original stuff, you could be, do this stuff for other people's. Uh, it's kind of like Thingiverse. You can think of it that way. Uh, you could do the MCAD thing here, send it to other mill. But the cool thing is, I'm going to go ahead and real quick, let me just go through the website first. So you can look at the top of the board, the bottom of the board. You can look at the schematic. You can look at the... Um, what it's actually going to look like, uh, kind of. Um, this is like the 3D rendering of it. This is the actual board file. Get a bill of materials. You can clean this up uh, or download it as a CSV file. So if you want to basically open up an Excel and play with it a little bit, uh, and then uh, you can look at each um, layer of basically it's a Gerber viewer. Um, you can look at each part of the board. Yeah, so but for my purposes for here I hit download PDF. We'll save it to my desktop. We'll go ahead and open this up. And the cool thing is now you've got um you know your stuff in a PDF file, you can send that to a client. Um, you can take this, you know, take the CSV file, print that out too, or save that as a PDF. But I just, it's, um, I think it's pretty cool how it's kind of like, again, I'm using it as a way to simplify the documentation process of my project. So that's it in a nutshell. That's how we go from a board file A board file, and like I said, the last video, we made the, we milled the circuit board. Here today we made the 3D case. All from the same board file. I love it. I love workflows. I like liking like making life as easy as possible, um, especially if you are doing any sort of client work or you know even just prototyping or um, you know even kind of low low volume production. You know, um, I want to spend more time testing the thing physically in the real world. 
uh, than sitting behind the computer and, and, and doing the, um, and not to say it's not fun, I love the design work, but um, it's just, it's a, it's a matter of priorities with time. There's only so many hours in the day and uh, only so many projects you can tackle and anything to take on, get more work done, I think is pretty cool. So that